Uh, our first candidate is Vince Adams, who's a candidate for the Benton County Board of Commissioners. Uh, welcome, Vince. Thanks for having me on the show, Larry. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, the first slide I have up shows uh, the those of you who never get out of your municipal boundaries where Benton County is. It's it's sort of uh, midway down the state, and it's on the I five corridor. Um, what's amazing about it is how blue it is. Um, and your race is particularly interesting uh, because it looks like you're, you're one of the few counties that still uh, uh, the commissioners are partisan races. Yes, they are. <clears throat> and, and what you have are five opponents in the Democratic primary for county commissioner, and you have no Republicans and no independents who ran. So uh, I think that means that whoever wins a plurality then will be the county commissioner. Pretty close. We do have an independent candidate that uh, has gone out and done his due diligence and, and done a petition. So we're going to, we're going to have a campaign going into November, but uh, uh, as you said, Benton County is very blue, particularly right there in, in the municipality of Corvallis. So we're very, very blue here. Uh, Bernie carried uh, Benton County and Corvallis pretty handily here. So, you know, I, you, you never know what's going to happen in an election. You know, you don't want to take anything for granted. But whoever wins the Dem Democratic nomination is very likely to be the, the county commissioner. And then this is, is, is it, and you're, you have three county commissioners, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the situation in our county, and, and that'll be um, what Doug is running for next, is is it's a home rule county, and we have five commissioners. It's a nonpartisan race. So what's interesting there is if three people run and then get a plurality, get a majority, the top two vote getters uh, uh, do a runoff in the in the in the November election. That's a good way to do it. <laughs> I don't know. There's pros and cons to having volunteer yeah. county commissioners. Um, but yours, yours, I believe, is a paid position. So um, it is, and it, play, it pays really well. Uh, that's actually, a, you know, an issue that simmers uh, um, in the in the I guess in the in the comment section of the paper. So. <laughs> Do you feel that the being paid commissioners makes a greater sense of accountability? I certainly feel that as as a candidate running for the position. Um, I do feel that obligation. It, the, the position does pay pay really well, um, and I think you do have an obligation. That's taxpayer money, and it, I think it directly links you. It also attracts a different uh, a different type of candidate. Uh, you know, someone who's wants to do uh, government professionally. I guess being a politi professional politician, and I don't mean that in a pejorative way. I mean that uh, you know taking civic engagement and policy development and, and shaping how that impacts people, taking that very seriously in a professional way. So what are the big issues in Benton County? Well, I mean, you know, in the, in the run up to this, the start of the show, you mentioned, you know, every politician talks about affordable housing, but you know, in Benton County, it really is a big problem for us. Um, in Corvallis, the average home price is $320,000. Rentals, you know, average around between twelve hundred to fourteen hundred dollars a month. Um, it's just a really, really tough housing market here. Folks that are even have modest incomes, uh, folks that are your professionals, your pol your police officers, your teachers, they're not able to buy in this community, um, and they're uh, having to commute in. Um, I sit on the Corvallis school board have been since 2013 and I've heard it over and over from our teachers that it's just a real it's really disappointing for them that they their children don't get to go to school uh, where their parents work what are the I'm, I'm sure you've been canvassing um, so what are the other top issues that people talk about when you go door to door you know the other one is disaster preparedness um, Folks are, you know, there's two things there. Of course, we all talk about Cascadia, the Cascadia earthquake event that's going to happen someday. We don't know exactly when. And even here in the Valley, we need to be prepared for that. Uh, that's going to have a lot of infrastructure impacts. Um, 
and folks are a little concerned about that. And then the voters I'm interacting with right now, because, you know, I'm canvassing with, with Democrats um, and they tend to be more environmentally minded and they're definitely thinking about climate change. And so with changes in climate, we have changes in wildfire risk. And uh, what happened in central California could very easily happen in the Willamette Valley, even this summer. So it's something that's on the, on the front of people's minds. Um, and it's something that the county can't do on its own. This is a, a situation where every resident of the county needs to participate in uh, being prepared and uh, in the case of wildfire, you know, creating those defensible spaces and being prepared to take action if, if the worst happens. Um, so you, uh, has, has there been issues with the county commission that need to be addressed or has it been a big happy family? Well, you know, I, I think that it's a pretty non-controversial. I think the biggest controversy that we've had recently is uh, there's 15 counties um, in Oregon uh, that are launching a, or have launched a lawsuit around the management of uh, state forest lands. And uh, last <laughs> year, yeah, I don't know if you've, you've heard about this lawsuit. And, you know, the contention is, is that the state has not uh, harvested an adequate amount of, of timber off of these, and that has impacted revenues going to counties. Um, and so um, last year there was a vote whether to stay in that lawsuit or get out. And that was uh, pretty controversial here, you know, because we are very blue. We're very environmentally minded. And uh, there was a lot of folks in the county that wanted us to get out of that lawsuit. Um, and so um, it turns out that it was a two to one vote to stay in the lawsuit. So we're going to be we're going to be at that table when negotiating on a settlement if that happens. Uh, but we don't know how it's going to come out. So that's, that's, but other than that, I mean, our commission is, they, they get along fairly well. I mean, they're all Democrats um, and they're all, you know, really skilled individuals. So uh, it's not too controversial here. So what, uh, what caused you to run? Were you, were you, are you part of the Bernie movement to, to get involved in politics or did you start before 2016? Well, I'll tell you, I used to be independent party of Oregon before 2016, but uh, when Bernie came out, he was saying all the things that really, really uh, spoke to me. Uh, so I uh, re-registered as a Democrat so I could vote for Bernie. And then uh, I was on the school board then. And I'll tell you, I see, you know, on sitting on the school board, we work with children and families. And I see a lot of uh, problems. We talk, just talked about housing. I'll tell you, last year in the Corvallis School District, we had 70, 73 kids that went unhoused. Uh, that means they didn't get into a shelter. Though that's, those were kids and families, their families that were out camping. And for me, that that is just not acceptable. So housing is really front and center and you know supporting those kids and their families that are really struggling. Um, Benton County has the highest income inequality in the state. And I haven't checked this, but I heard from someone yesterday, literally that we're fifth in the country in income inequality. Um, so we have serious problems that are affecting families and children. And I can't fix that sitting on the school board. I can't address those problems. So that's probably the biggest reason that I'm running for County commission is that, you know, the, to help children and families, help uh, working folks, um, I need to be in a place where I can uh, have impact in multiple dimensions of the community. Wow, being on a school board is uh, can be tough. <laughs> I was I, I attended a school board meeting here in Astoria, and uh, uh, when I walked in, I was given a page and a half instructions on how to behave. Uh, and that was like an indication of, of past issues that they've had to address because it seems like people only go to school board meetings because they're mad about something. You know, and that is, you know, that's the case here in Corvallis for the most part. Um, we definitely celebrate our successes, but um, yeah, it's pretty typical that, that folks, you know, parents interact with me when, when there's a problem um, and that's okay. Um, the nice thing about here in Corvallis, and I think that's true anywhere on a school board, we're all working for success for kids. Um, so if you stay focused on kids and stay focused on, on achievement and success for them, you know, the, the rhetoric can get pulled aside and you can, you can find solutions that work. So, uh, uh, 
tell tell us more about Benton County and um, and so there you I, I believe that your your you, the the majority party in your county is Democrats and yep. um, and I, I assume that they were amongst the county well of course all the counties except one voted for Bernie in 2016 um, has has the has the progressive movement continued there. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, you know, in your lead in, you were talking about uh, lots of folks turning out to be uh, precinct committee persons and we're having the same thing here. Um, uh, we just did that, you know, a couple months ago in the run up to, to this primary to get folks on the ballot. And, uh, you know, we've been having full meetings. We're having a lot of engagement right now. Um, and it's really interesting with having six candidates for commissioner. Um, we're having a lot of engagement with that. We, you know, we have a couple of women on there. We have a young woman, uh, Nancy Weiss, who's a, a city councilor, and she's getting a lot of young women engaged in politics. It's really exciting. Um, we're, we have a really good environment here politically, um, and uh, I think we're we're on pace to be, you know, really engaged, um, you know, in November and getting ready for for twenty twenty. So uh, how, how can people help your campaign? Well, they can go to electvince.com. They can sign up to volunteer there. They can donate there. And right now we're doing, uh, we're doing field, our field uh, campaign right now. So I'll, as soon as I log off with you, I'm going to be out uh, canvassing. So that's what we're going to be doing right up until, uh, until election day. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what we need is canvassers at this point. Anything you'd like to add? Well, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. And uh, I love the, the idea of this online engaged uh, uh, politics and, you know, having the opportunity for, you know, being out of what the mainstream media, but being in a in a format where folks can uh, sign in and and ask questions. And I think this engaged uh, political media is a wave of the future. I think it's great for me as a candidate. And I hope, um, you know, I'll be happy to come back on if I'm elected. Um, and just having that opportunity to have the public engage me as a political person or a person in public life is really a great opportunity. I really appreciate this work. And um, I urge folks to to you know, donate to this to this program and try to keep it alive and build it because I think this is the wave of the future. I think this is where we need to go. Betsy, did we have any questions online for Vince? Uh, I I don't know how applicable it is to a county commissioner race, but someone asked about the drinking fountains versus you know plastic bottles in um in in Benton County. Are there places that you know, public facilities that don't have drinking fountains? Maybe that's... I know. I think that's really site-based. I mean, it's... we Of course, we, you know, like all communities all over the country, there's lots of people that are still consuming water out of plastic bottles. And we all know that we need to stop doing that. I mean, we need to get away from disposable containers in general. And that's a whole nother conversation. So that's a really interesting uh, topic. I'm glad someone asked that question. It's something that, uh, as a policymaker, how can we support more bottle filling stations is probably what we need to do, um, just so folks can, can refill their reusable bottles and, and you know, foster that. Be a little more, less consumption, more sustainability. Yeah. yeah. So I just just to tag on to that, because it, it, it a lot of people may not really know, and I certainly get confused about what a county commissioner actually does and has the power over. Yeah. So it seemed to me like you could do things like, no, Nestle, we're not going to rezone this area to allow you to <laughs> suck all the water out of the ground. Right. I mean, yeah. those are the kind of things you, you actually have power over. Right. Yep. That is, you know, the county commissioner. Uh, First of all, you know, passes ordinances and, and creates policy. They also have a quasi-judicial capacity. So if the, their planning commission um, has a decision appealed, so they, they rule in those. Um, but I think the, the most important roles that county commissioners uh, play right now is, you know, setting a strategic vision for, for their county and budgeting to, that, to those goals and being a strong advocate for their communities. So those are that's what county commissioners do. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Was there anything else, Betsy? Uh, I don't see any other questions. Thanks. Okay. 
Vince, thank you so much. We will let you go back to your canvassing. Good luck with your election. Thanks a lot, Larry. Everybody have a good day. Bye-bye.